Welcome back to the channel everybody, I'm Dino. It's only been about a week since we got over a foot of snow, almost close to two feet in some locations around Niagara Falls, but if you look around today, what you're going to see is most of that's melted. There's just a bit of remnants here and up on my deck, I guess, over here. I'm going to get back on that GTX uh, skidoo today and I'm going to rebush the front suspension. It still has the original Delrin bushings inside of it and they're loose and sloppy, so I'm going to take those out and rebush them with a set of oil light bronze bushings, which should tighten that front end up really well and make it steer and work properly. So why don't you sit back and grab yourself something warm or maybe cold to drink, I can't tell anymore around here, and enjoy Dino's Tinker Shed. It really is a nice day out here, but I got to get back into the shop and get a few things done. I'll see you in a few minutes. When Skidoo released their Rev chassis back in 2003, it came with a completely new front suspension. Gone was the trailing link arms of past models like the, uh, the ZX chassis, and we ended up with a double A-arm suspension known in the industry as the RAS or RAS. I think it's Response Angle Suspension. They have more acronyms than you can imagine. It's hard to keep them straight. However, this suspension really did perform better than most trailing arm suspensions. And if you look around today, you're going to see that just about every snowmobile that you're going to buy comes with some form of a double A arm independent front suspension like this. Over the years, Skidoo has upgraded this suspension, changed some of the angles in the componentry. Essentially, it's the same thing though. And the one weak point to these, in my opinion, is the fact that Skidoo always used Delrin bushings inside of the control arm mounts. Now these are fine, they function okay, but after three or four, maybe five seasons, they start to get a little bit loose and the suspension moves around a little more than most riders would want. The solution to this is to rebush the suspension and this happens, like I say, every two or three years, you go to your Skidoo dealer, you buy your Delrin bushings and you push them in and, and away you go. But there is a better solution. And Mark's suspension here is gonna get that today in the form of oil light bushings. Now, oil light bushings are actually a self-lubricating bronze material that's much more durable than Delrin and over time, lubricates the suspension components and that lasts much, much longer. And they're not really a lot more money. I think the whole set was $55 to do the front end on this. So it makes a lot of sense. So why don't we start by taking a look inside this side that I've already rebushed and I can show you how the mounting is on there. And then we'll switch over to the other side, pull those out and put the bushings in. All right, let's get started now. Here is the RAS suspension, exactly how you would see it on your Rev chassis if you were doing this project. There's a few key components maybe that we can identify. So this here, this is your steering spindle. This is what your skis attach to and the control arms attach to and basically tie the whole unit together. Now on that spindle, you have an upper and lower ball joint and the lower one really is like on your car. The upper one's more like a hind joint. Over here, you have another hind joint style connection and this connects to your steering. This is what actually moves the spindles in uh, unison together. You'll have to pop this off, use a 13 millimeter wrench and if you have a thin wrench like I do, I have a thin wall wrench, it's much easier to grab that stud and then underneath there is I think a 15 millimeter nut. It's a nylock nut that you can pop off 
and then with a very soft faced hammer you can gently tap that and it'll pop out up here is your upper control arm and just below it is your obviously your lower control arm sitting in between those is your shock and spring assembly so this is basically a coil over shock and you don't have to necessarily take this out to do this project you can simply remove the lower bolt from the shock and uh, the coilover assembly and let it hang there and then you can take the upper and lower off without any problems I have this out for a couple reasons on the other side mostly just to take it apart inspect it clean it make sure there's enough damping still in this in the shocks up here and then I'm going to reassemble it and put it back in but if you're just doing the bushings you really don't have to take that shock completely out down here you'll see you have a sway bar that connects both sides of the skis this runs through this small little puck down here and it slides up and down the back leg of your control arm as the suspension articulates that's a tricky little thing to get back in but it's not terribly terribly difficult at the very back you're going to see that each one of the control arms has two mounting bolts one forward and one aft and each one of these has a bolt that runs through the chassis through the control arm and then bolted at the other end of the chassis one of the most difficult things with this process is kind of locating how to gain access to some of the bolt heads on these these uh, bolts and nuts inside here they're not not too bad but for the upper one and the lower one they're captured inside the front nose cone and then back here this one's actually in the engine bay and then this one down here is in a captured rail you'll be able to see how this works but once you figure it out it really is the hardest part of getting these things out is just gaining access to those particular components okay let's get started keep in mind I've already removed the shock here to give a little bit better view I've removed the actual steering spindle here as well I took that off I disconnected the tie rod end here and I've gotten that completely out of the way here so you can see but once you actually do get the bolts out it's really just a matter of dropping these down now remember the lower control arm here does have this little connection point for the sway bar but that just slides off like that and then you can bring this up right onto the bench and we can have a look at it here is that lower control arm that we just took off and here's where the bushings reside so I'm going to take a look at this side first now you'll notice inside here there's a steel bushing as well now I've cleaned these up already because they were just gungy but I just put them on a wire wheel and clean those up what we're interested in are these here which are the Delrin bushings and you can see they're basically just plastic they have a little cut in them like this here let's see like that so that they slide in and there's two on each connecting point these ones aren't too bad but have a look at these ones over here this one is just about missing all of this registration shoulder altogether and on the other side it's completely locked in there I'm gonna have to take a screwdriver see if I can pop that out of there because the new bushings won't go in at all if we don't get these old ones out and you can see this one's pretty much welded right in there it's a little bit of a challenge but we'll get it I'm just gonna get the screwdriver in there and there we go so you can see this one is pretty much completely junk yeah you can see these are pretty much destroyed there's hardly anything left here I'm very glad that we're going to change these out you can just replace them with more Delrin bushings like this however they're just going to wear out in a couple years what we're going to use is a set of oil light 
bronze bushings. Let me get a couple out here for you to look at. So you can see they're much more robust than the Delrin. The steel bushing fits in there really nice and tight. There'll be two of them like this. And these will pivot on that steel bushing. I'm still going to apply a little bit of grease to this when I assemble it all. However, these are much better. Let's take a look at how these go into the control arm. These didn't really come with any instructions, so I'm kind of making this up. I'm going to set two of them aside there. I'm just going to take a little bit of grease and apply it to the outside of this, just so they don't rust, or it helps prevent rust anyway, inside the control arm end itself. Once that's done, We'll take our control arm and basically just insert these like this. You can come in with a wire brush and clean up inside of these, which I've already done. I just use a pipe fitting brush like this. So you come in here and just turn that like that. And you can see I haven't done this one yet. It just will clean out any kind of rust or contaminants. You don't have to be super aggressive with this. You're just trying to get it clean in there. So let's put these next sets in. Again, I'll use a little bit of grease on there, mostly just to stop any rust. You can see this one's a little bit tougher to get in. To solve this, I'll just tap it in with a dead blow hammer gently. There we go. Back to the grease here. I don't know if this grease is necessary, but I like using grease. And this one too is a little bit, doesn't take much. There we go. You've got new bushings in your front end of your sled. I am going to take these steel bushings and apply a little bit additional grease to these. And then they just get inserted inside the bronze. And I'll even apply a little bit of grease to the inside of these steel bushings before I put the actual bolt through again. But right now, that's pretty good. The lower is completely done and it's ready to go back into the sled. It's the exact same uh, process to get these back in as it is to take them out. But let's get that upper one out now and rebush that. By far the most challenging bolt to get out of these suspension components is the upper rear bolt. Now the front part of the bolt is a 16 millimeter and it's easy. You can get at that quite simply, especially like I say here where I have the shock completely removed. Even with the shock in, you can get in there fairly easily. The challenging part is you need to get a 15 millimeter wrench inside of the actual chassis here, tucked down inside. I'll get a shot of this for you. This side isn't too bad. I had a much harder time over on the actual clutch side. Um, I actually had to heat a wrench up and bend it to get it to sort of hook around and grab that nut. On this side, I seem to be able to get a, uh, an opened end wrench on this thing and actually make this work. It can be frustrating working on this type of equipment sometimes and you need to keep that in mind. Just take a break, have a look at it and come up with a solution. Maybe ask a friend if you run into problems. Overall, this isn't a bad job, but those two bolts are a little bit challenging. In fact, I had to actually remove the um, regulator connector cover to get at these. But this is where a manual is super handy. It'll tell you how to get to those things and how to walk them out of there. Let me get these out and we'll get the upper, upper control arm out as well. One of the things I want to show you is the rear ones actually have this little weird point on them here. When I took the lower ones out, whoever had this sled before replaced one of these bolts with just a regular cap head screw. 
So I went to the Skidoo dealer and bought the proper component for it. It was like $6 and now it has a matching set and it's, it's proper. Anyway, I'll take these off and I'll get the rest of that control arm off. And on the front, there is actually a washer. This right side was tweaked a little bit. So I want to make sure that these aren't in bad shape when I put them back together. And that bushing just fell right out. Let's get this one up on the bench. I'm just going to use a little bit of brake cleaner on these, try to clean them up a little bit. That brake cleaner dissolves any old grease or grime or anything that's on there. Overall, these are in good shape. With the grease off of these, I'm just going to insert a quarter inch extension. It looks like a six inch extension. This gives me a handle now that I can rotate these on the wire wheel and I'll just clean up all the rust. You can actually do it like this, sort of on the angle. And it'll want to walk down to the bottom like that. We'll see how this looks. On the angle like that, it both turns it and gives it some abrasion. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Finally, go with this. There we go. We're ready to rock. The control arms really go back in exactly the same way they came out. If your tunnel's not bent, these things will go in quite easily. And then it's just a matter of reinserting the bolts in the locations that you found them. You can see how much nicer and more solid this is now. There's really, it's a nice, firm, um, system now. The noise that you're hearing is this um, sway bar control bracket here. It always makes noise but the upper and lower control arms are nice and tight now and I did manage to get in this um, lower ball joint which was a bit of a fight. Um, maybe I'll do another video at some point on how to do these but I don't really have the right tools so it's a little bit of a dog's breakfast the way that I did this. And it really isn't a proper way to show you how to do it. So I'll see if I can find the right tools and, and maybe do a service on another person's snowmobile in the future. Next, I'm just going to reinsert my spring, which I have here. And it's easier to do this before you actually put on the steering knuckle. It basically just slides down through the upper control arm and then it goes up and I'll pin it on the top to start with. Then I can just raise that lower control arm and put the bolt through. It's pretty easy. So I'll do that now. Here is our ski spindle and you can tell the way that this fits on the sled because this tab here needs to face up and to the back. This is where your tie rod end for your steering actually connects. The upper ball joint is slightly worn. It's not terrible. We're going to reuse this and if Mark wants we can change this out next year. It is missing a washer here and I don't have the right size washer. 
it's not critical but it should have one it it basically just sits between the ball joint stud and the steel control arm here but i think we'll be okay the way this is going to go together then is i'm going to slide it up and onto that lower ball joint i'm going to take the washer here and the castle nut and i'm going to thread these on with the castle nut facing down later on we're actually going to put that cotter pin through there right now i just want it to snug up there and hold the actual spindle in place while we put the other parts on next i am going to take it pivot it forward and line it up and then slide it through that upper control arm i'm then going to take this 19 millimeter bolt or nut here and I'll lightly fit that on. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, this tie rod end here and I'm going to drop it down here but there are two washers, one on the top and one on the bottom here that are going to fit through that hole. I'll put this last washer on the bottom and basically our front ends back together other than tightening everything up. It should work nicely. It seems to be all fitting right. Everything's back in the right spot. And this thing just needs a little bit of tightening up. When it comes to retightening this upper ball joint, you can see that it's going to move when you go to tighten it. And what will happen is it will bottom out on this little tapered shoulder here and it won't get quite the right articulation. We want to ensure that it is pretty much parallel like this with these control arms. So when we go to tighten it, we're going to use a 13 millimeter wrench and hold it right there on the flats as we tighten it. I'm going to come back in with my 19 millimeter here. And as I tighten it, I'm just going to make sure that I keep that articulating head exactly where it needs to be as I slowly creep up on this. There we go. Now again, I have this 13 millimeter, very thin wrench that I can hold this tie rod end while I tighten it up. Sometimes it can be a little bit too tight to get a regular wrench in there, but this should be okay. And I'll just use a 17 millimeter socket and I'll tighten that down. There we go. Lastly, I'm just going to tighten up this ball joint castle nut takes a 17 millimeter wrench and I am just going to keep tightening here. Eventually this isn't a tapered socket. It'll bottom out to where you can't actually move it anymore. And I'm just about there. The last thing you're going to do is take this cotter pin and slide it through the hole in the actual ball joint down here. See where it is. There it is. And what I find with this is these castle nuts do not line up right with the, uh, with the ball joint itself. But I'll twist those around. You can trim those off. I'll do that in a minute. But now it's locked in there pretty good. That's pretty much it for actually replacing the front bushing in this RAS front suspension. It really doesn't take all that long, about an hour from start to finish if you have your tools ready and all your supplies set. And this gets us one step closer to getting Mark's machine back on the snow and ready for the 2022-23 riding season. If you liked today's episode, please leave a comment down below. And if I've missed anything, let other people know by commenting as well. I do make mistakes and I'm, I'm just a human, right? If you really do like this style of content, by all means, please like and consider subscribing to the channel. It helps me out and it helps YouTube to determine with its algorithm who wants to watch this type of content. Until then, I've got a couple more projects I want to do before I get this sled back to Mark, but I hope to see you soon here at Dino's Tinker Shed. You have yourself a great day and I hope to see you soon. Bye for now.